Hey, welcome to my closet. It's not really my closet, this is in my shop, but these cabinets eventually will go inside my closet. Now don't worry, I'm gonna do a full video on that entire closet build out with the cabinets and everything in a few weeks when it's done. But for now, I wanted to do a little video on just one small component of that build. Now, just let me paint a picture for you. It's late at night, you're laying in bed, and you hear something downstairs. You don't know what it is. So, you go to your closet and you grab some candy. Cause maybe you wanna see if whoever's downstairs wants some candy too. But you don't wanna leave your candy laying out for anybody to find. That's just silly. So, I thought it would be cool if I built a secret compartment under the shelves in my closet where you could hide things like candy or maybe cigars, you know. I think you're supposed to take the paper off those. Anyways, my point is there's certain things that we don't want laying around the house that we want to put in a secure secret compartment. And that's what I want to try and do. Cause you don't want the kids eating all your candy or, you know, eating so much candy that they die. So the goal of this video is to create shelves that look like normal shelves. When you look at them, you're just like, oh, those are some normal shelves, but they have a secret compartment underneath them. Probably not the upper shelves. So there's gonna be two shelves. So I think all the lower shelves, secret compartments, all the upper shelves, dummy shelves. Meaning they're just regular shelves to throw people off my scent. Now the first step in making any secret storage is to make everything appear as normal. So the first thing I decided to do was create the shelves on the upper section of the cabinets and make them just like I would any other shelves so that everything seems on par. Then once I have those made, I can mimic the lower shelves to look exactly like the upper shelves. So I cut down some 3 quarter inch plywood because that's what I'll be using for the upper shelves. Now for the lower shelves, I'll be using two sheets of half inch plywood per shelf. One on the top and one on the bottom to kind of create a secret sandwich. Don't worry, I'll explain better as we go on. Now, how I normally mount shelves inside cabinet carcasses is I just use shelf pins. And I use a little jig like this one from Rockler. It's got this special little drill bit that you stick in the holes and zip zap zoop. You drill some holes that are perfectly lined up. You just kind of work your way up the cabinet carcass, add in your pins, and you got nice rows of little holes that you can stick your pins in and mount your shelves on. So I just drilled a bunch of holes until it looked like this. Now we're only going to be using these shelf pins to mount the upper shelves. So you might be wondering, well, why did you drill holes as if you're going to do them down below? Because this is secret storage and I want everyone to think nothing's going on here. So if I stopped the shelf pins at the top, well, it would have been pretty obvious that something was different on the bottom. So after drilling all our holes and inserting our shelf pins, I set my three quarter inch plywood in place on the top. Now you can see we immediately have a problem and that's this exposed plywood edge, which normally I would just face with some birch edge banding. But we wanna create more of a void under the shelf so that we can create that secret storage on the lower shelf. So instead of using edge banding, which is just the same width as the plywood, I decided to use solid birch. Now I'm gonna make the face of these shelves a little bit thicker than normal, but again, that's to create a void underneath that we can use for storage on that lower shelf. So after cutting some solid birch down to three inches in width, I then went over to the dado stack and I added this nice little dadoed groove towards the top. This is going to give us a nice channel that we can add some glue to and securely fasten that birch to the front of our three quarter inch piece of plywood. Now, if you didn't want to do the whole dado channel thing, you could just glue and tack the birch onto the front of the plywood, but then you'd have to fill your nail holes and it wouldn't look as pretty. This way you don't see any fasteners. It's glued very tightly and our shelves look something like this. Now, yes, I know they look a little thick, but you have to imagine there's going to be a lower shelf down below and that's where we're going to create our secret compartment. There's also going to be a face frame around this entire cabinet, which will help with the overall look and help disguise the fact that there's something fishy going on. 
Now on the upper shelves, we had to cut them just a little bit less than the opening of the cabinet so we could fit them on the shelf pins. On this lower shelf, we cut our half inch plywood exactly the width of the inside of our carcass. So it was kind of a nice tight fit. Then we took the top portion of our shelf, so one piece of that half inch pre-finished birch ply, and we have to kind of create an under frame that we can build our secret storage off of. I started by adding a dado channel towards the back of the panel, about four inches in from the back. Then I added a rabbit on both sides. The reason I'm doing this is because this plywood is pre-finished, which means we can't really glue anything to the pre-finished surface of the ply because, well, glue just doesn't like to stick to pre-finished plywood. So by adding these rabbits and dados, we create a raw wood surface, not to mention a stronger joint when we glue on our underframe. To create that frame, I'm going super simple. I just ripped down some pieces of scrap three quarter inch ply and I cut them to length. Now, if you're wondering how these are gonna fit in, don't worry, they go something like this. I cut two pieces that are the full depth of the shelf. They're gonna go on each side and sit down in those rabbits. Then I have a cross piece that's gonna sit in this dado and it's gonna sit in between those two side pieces. Now this is gonna create a spot for me to mount my hinge for my little fold down secret compartment. So the first thing I needed to do was glue up those side pieces. So I added some glue onto that rabbit. I stuck my little side pieces on there and I clamped them in place. Again, I'm trying to avoid using any visible fasteners. I want this to look as much like a normal shelf as possible so that nobody finds my candy. So after gluing those side pieces on, I set the shelf aside so the glue could dry and I started cutting some more solid birch to length to face the front of my shelf. Once I had all those pieces cut, the glue was dry on my side pieces and then I added a little more glue and I inserted that little cross member piece right into that dado, nice tight fit. And then just to make sure it was super secure, I countersunk some screws in from the outside to hold everything in place. Now at this point, if you were to look underneath the shelf, sure it would look a lot different than the one above. But if you flip it over like this, and then you take that piece of birch that we cut, just like the one on the upper shelf and stick it on the front, it hides everything that is going on underneath. So we had to glue that birch in place so that we could well, build the rest of our secret compartment. Again, no fasteners, just a little glue onto that raw exposed plywood on the front. And then instead of using clamps, because I didn't need a lot of pressure here, I just used some blue painter's tape and I held everything in place until that glue set up. I did leave just a little lip on the top. This just makes it a lot easier than trying to get that clean wood flush with that pre-finished wood and then sanding it all. That can be a mess. Next, with the glue dry, I took the tape off and I sanded all my edges, broke them down just a little bit, and I carried my half-completed secret storage shelf over just to make sure that it would fit inside my carcass. Well, not my carcass, because well, I'm not dead yet, but the, the cabinet carcass. And it did fit. Now to start working on the bottom of the shelf. Now for the bottom, I'm using another piece of half-inch pre-finished ply. The only problem is we gotta glue a bunch of stuff to the bottom side of this, and as I mentioned before, glue doesn't like to stick to pre-finished ply, so I pulled out the sander, and pretty soon that pre-finished ply was no longer pre-finished. It was just raw plywood. This 3M Cubitron sandpaper sure takes off that finish in a hurry. Then I measured the distance from the back of our shelf to that front little cross piece and I went over to the table saw and I cut my half inch piece of plywood down right along that seam. Now I'm going to glue this back section onto my bracing just, well, with a little glue because that's what you do when you glue something down. Again, no fasteners, just glue and clamps. Now what we did by cutting this back section is create a hinge point so that we can make a, well, lid that folds down underneath the cabinet. Kinda like this. Now this piece was the full width of the inside of our carcass, but since this is gonna fold down, I don't want it to rub along the sides. So I took that piece over to the table saw and I just trimmed off an eighth of an inch so it wouldn't rub on the inside of the cabinet. Then I cut down some more solid birch. 
we're gonna use this to kind of create a frame on the inside of that fold down lid to catch our secret stuff we're trying to hide. If that doesn't make sense, just keep watching. It'll all come together in the end. Something like this, even though this is the bottom of the top side of the shelf. You kind of got to think upside down as we're building this because I really am building the entire thing upside down and it'll make a lot more sense once we flip it over. Now to hook my birch frame together, I just used a little CA glue and the activator spray to get my frame in the correct shape. Once I had everything CA glued together, then I can join it together a little stronger without fiddling around with trying to keep it in the right position. Basically, we're just making three very simple birch rectangles. After they were glued together, I pulled out a 3 8 inch Forstner bit and I drilled a little hole on each corner and I sunk in an inch and a quarter fastener. After screwing all my frames together, of course I wanted to hide those screws and that's why I pre-drilled the hole with the 3 8 inch Forstner bit. Now I can use a 3 8 inch plug cutter and cut some nice black walnut plugs to fill all of my holes. I thought about just using birch, but Sometimes a nice accent color to make something pop really takes it to the next level. After using the plug cutter to cut my plugs, I went over to the bandsaw and I freed them all from their woodly bonds. Then all I had to do was just add a dab of glue in each one of those holes, insert my walnut plug, give it a little twist so that it was completely coated in glue, and wait for it to dry. Once the glue was dry, I just took this little handheld flush trim saw I trimmed all of the plugs, well, flush, because it's a flush trim saw, and gave them a nice sanding. And they looked something like this. Fresh, clean, and just a nice little accent to our inner frame thingamabob. Now I've got my three birch frames that look like this. Now inside the frame, I don't want there just to be raw plywood. That wouldn't look very high-end and secretive. So I went to my local fabric store and I picked up this nice green felt. Now using my frame as a template, I just set it on top of the felt and then very carefully with an X-Acto knife, I cut out three pieces of felt roughly to shape that eventually I will stick inside of my birch frames. Oh, happy holidays. This is by far my favorite time of year. Deck the halls, trim the trees, snow falling down, all that good stuff. But it can also be a little crazy because you're running around all over the place trying to buy gifts for people. There's sugar and junk food everywhere you look. That is why I love drinking my AG1 throughout the holidays because it is the one part of my daily routine that I can look forward to and I know is gonna be constant. I get my little powder, I mix it with my water, and I know what I'm putting in my body, at least for that one moment, is good for me. The thing I love about AG1 is it supports not only your brain, your gut, but also your immune system. Nobody likes to be sick during the holidays. Do you want to be a Grinch this holiday season? Well, if you don't want to be, you might try AG1 because powerful plant extracts, adaptogenic herbs, and antioxidants help support your metabolism and promote mental clarity. Which means you'll be in a better mood and won't be saying bah humbug this and bah humbug that. AG1 is also packed with tons of antioxidants, which promotes healthy aging. You ever wonder why Santa Claus looks the same year after year? I'm not saying this for sure, but it might be the AG1. You ever feel tired and worn out during the holidays? Well, it's probably because you're eating a cinnamon roll and sucking it down with a glass of eggnog. Anyone's going to feel tired after that. The nice thing about AG1 is it actually supports prolonged energy because it's got good stuff in there like magnesium and B vitamins. So if you want to try AG1 this holiday season, just go to drinkag1.com slash bourbon moth and you'll get $20 off when you subscribe. And they're going to give my entire community a free year supply of their vitamin D3 plus K2 and five free AG1 travel packs when you sign up. So just click the link down there, try it, and have yourself a ho 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 hap, ho ho happening. Just have a Merry Christmas. Now that I had all that felt cut to size, I could finally adhere my frames to the underside of our fold down lid. Or to the top of our fold down lid because, well, the lid is upside down. Anyways, I made sure the frame was centered on my piece of plywood and I pushed it all the way to the very back. So that lip that you see will be the front of our fold down secret compartment. 
Then using a combination of wood glue and CA glue, because I didn't want to clamp it and wait for the glue to dry, I added a little activator to the underside of our fold down bottom thingamawatsit, and very carefully I set my birch frame down on my pencil lines and I held it until that CA glue dried. Now the wood glue will take a little while longer to dry, but I can start working with it because the CA glue is holding it in place. And it looks something like this. Now you can start to kind of see how this is going to work. I will insert a hinge in that crack there, and then the whole thing will fold open like this, although it will be upside down, and you can store stuff in it. Now the other thing I wanted to incorporate into the middle secret compartment was this lock because some candy you really don't want other people to have access to. It's actually a safety thing because, well, if they eat too much candy, they're going to die. And you don't want that to happen, so you want to make sure that candy is nice and locked up safe. So I measured to the center of my little overhanging lip, and then using a 1-inch Forstner bit, I drilled partway through on the top, and then using an 11 16 Forzner bit, I drilled the rest of the way through from the bottom and I created this nice little shelf that I could recess this pre-purchased mailbox lock into. Now, in order for the locking mechanism to, well, lock the shelf closed, it needed a slot for that metal locking mechanism to slide into. So I colored the end of the locking mechanism with a little graphite from a lead pencil. I held the bottom of the shelf in place and wiggled the key. This marked exactly where on the inside of the shelf I needed to add my groove. And then I just cut the groove using the large mortise setting on my 500 domino joiner. It actually worked really well and created a nice little slot that looks like that. Now when I turn the key, the locking mechanism goes into the slot and it will lock my secret storage compartment secure so that nobody can eat my candy. I didn't feel the need to have all the storage compartments locked, so for the other two, I just drilled a hole all the way through so I can stick my finger in there and open them up. But all of these are going to need some way to stay shut because, well, they're mounted upside down. So I used these rare earth magnets and I just glued one on the actual shelf and one on the lid on either side, so four magnets in total. Now if you're wondering, is that going to be strong enough to hold these things shut? These rare earth magnets are the strongest magnets, literally, that you can buy. And they are available on my website, and I have no doubt that they will be plenty strong to keep this thing shut, because when I say strong, I mean it takes everything you have to pull them apart. It's kind of ridiculous, actually. So pretty soon I had all my magnets glued in place and before I hooked on my hinges and put everything together, I wanted to finish all of that raw birch. Now the plywood was pre-finished, so I'm gonna just use some wipe on poly because I thought it would probably, you know, closely resemble the standard pre-finish that they put on in the factory. I don't know. Anyways, after all my birch was finished and the finish was dry, it was time to insert my felt into those birch frames. So I sprayed on a little spray adhesive onto that raw plywood and very carefully I started sticking that felt in place. Now I purposely made the felt a little bit bigger than it needed to. And I applied it the same way that you would apply wallpaper. I used this little squeegee spreader and I just worked my way across the surface of the plywood, scraping that spreader along the felt to get rid of any pockets or air bubbles or cracks or creases until the felt laid out nice and smooth. There was a little bit of a lip all the way around the inside, so I just went back with the X-Acto knife and very carefully trimmed that off until the felt perfectly fit inside my birch frame. And with that, it was finally time to hook on the hinges and make these things functional. Now for hinges, I just went with these pre-cut to length piano hinges. They don't extend all the way across the back of the shelf, but I figured it's gonna be strong enough and you're not really gonna see them because they're up underneath the cabinet. I held the hinges in place and using these rockler hinge drill bit things that perfectly self-center in the hole, I managed to pre-drill all of the holes perfectly and insert my screws. 
I know, real exciting stuff I'm showing you here. With all the screws in place, I gave them a little test, and sure enough, it worked pretty darn good. Now you might have been wondering if I'm not using the shelf pins to mount these in the cabinet, how will they be mounted? Well that's pretty darn simple. I just took a countersink bit and I pre-drilled four holes on the inside of each secret shelf box, two on the left and two on the right. Then I pre-inserted some inch and a quarter screws into each hole just so I didn't have to fumble around with them once I got the shelf in place. Then using tape, I created a line that was the exact height that I wanted the top of the shelf to sit. Put tape on that side and tape on the inside, even though you can't see it. Then all I had to do was slide the shelf in place with that secret door open and then holding it right to the bottom of that tape line, I reached under there and I screwed in those screws. Until now, the shelf was permanently affixed, but because those pinholes go all the way down, you would just assume it's a normal shelf, sitting on shelf pins. Nothing crazy going on here. Now at this point, our secret compartments opened, but they just flopped down until they ran into the lower part of the cabinet carcass, which I didn't love. I wanted to create some sort of stop so they only came down a certain distance. I had a bunch of this heavy-duty leather strapping material, for lack of a better word. So I took it over to the bandsaw and I cut a bunch of pieces to exactly the same length. Once I had all my pieces cut, I measured in a half inch from each end and I drilled a little hole, making sure that they were all drilled in exactly the same place so that each leather strap was the exact same size with holes exactly even. That's kind of important for getting these all mounted correctly. Then I inserted a half inch little screw into each pre-drilled hole. Then all I had to do was go over to my little secret compartments and drill one end of the leather strap into the side and one end into the top. And now they stopped once they got to the end of those leather straps. And once the straps were trained a little bit to fold inside when you lifted the thing up, they wouldn't get in the way and everything was hunky-dory. At this point, I was pretty stoked on how everything was coming together. I got the rest of my leather straps installed, and as you can see, it holds all my secret goods pretty darn good. I got my gold, I got my candy. The one thing is it's a little dark in there. So I found these really sweet LED lights on Amazon. I'll include a link in the video description. They are motion activated and rechargeable and they're just installed with this magnetic metal strip and double-sided tape. So you just stick the light up underneath the cabinet right where you want it, and when they sense the motion of opening the secret compartment, they turn on and eventually turn themselves off. And when they die, you just pull them out, recharge them, and stick them back in there. So literally in about the matter of, I don't know, 60 seconds, I had all three LED lights installed and they definitely took this project from pretty flippin' cool to pretty flippin' awesome. And then I did something else that maybe I shouldn't be showing you, but I will because I'm a giver. I installed these really cool candy magnets up underneath the shelf. So you could stick your candy up there so even if someone opens it, it doesn't look like there's anything in there, but if you reach up underneath, you can grab your candy from its secret magnet and store it securely. You know, until you're ready to eat it. Or share it with the serial killer that breaks into your house in the middle of the night. Now, be honest with yourself. If you hadn't just watched that video, you would have no clue that this secret storage was even there, right? I'm pretty happy with these, the lights, really set it just over the top. I love that. And now we can be assured that our candy is safe. I will reach your children. So if you would like to make some cool secret under shelf cabinet storage thingies, I don't know what to call them yet, then uh, check the video description down below. There's links to all the hinges and lights and everything that you need. And realistically, these could be implemented into any built-in cabinet, which is pretty cool. So next time you break into someone's house and you want to steal their goods, 
just take a look under the shelves because you never know what you might find. I always forget to take the wrapper off.